Pei Chan, we saw some pretty encouraging PMIs from China on the last day of the year. But to what extent did those headline numbers mask a bit of weakness? Thanks, Paul, for your invitation. Happy New Year. Uh, for China's official PMI, I saw mixed signals from a, a relatively good print for December. On one hand, we do see that uh, supply side is holding up relatively well, uh, production still in exp expansion, and uh, supplier delivery time is improving. But uh, on, the, on the other hand, on the demand side, we do see pockets of weakness because new, new orders and new export orders are both in contraction. Uh, uh, they are stabilizing right now not contracting further, but uh, that posed some downside risks to the manufacturing sector outlook in the medium term. Uh, another positive sign from the official PMI is the easing price pressures, uh, which I think will probably be contributing to corporate's profitability in the short term. And that will also leave more room for the policymakers to step up with easing measures to stabilize the growth momentum into 2022. Yeah, well, China is still pursuing COVID zero while wrestling with uh, sporadic outbreaks. So how do you see this weighing on the growth picture for China? Yeah, I think judging from the PMI data, we are actually seeing a temporary stabilization in between two phases of COVID outbreaks. We are now seeing a more outbreak in Xi'an, uh, Shanxi province, and which has shown around 1,500 cases since the first outbreak on 23rd of December. And I think that's going to pose some downside, dis downside pressures and some disruptions to production on the manufacturing sector, as well as uh, service sector ahead of Chinese New Year. So I'm not optimistic uh, yet about the service sector outlook uh, in China in the short term, especially when China seems to, it, especially when China seems to be continuing uh, with its zero COVID strategy in the near term. So what sort of easing measures can we expect? Are we talking about the main rate being cut or other tools like the triple R? Well, we're actually seeing more uh, dovish tilts from various policy statements in December, from the Politburo meeting, Central Economic Court Conference, as well as the PBOC's uh, monetary policy reports. So we have actually changed our view on the easing from uh, the focus to structural easing to more willingness from the policymakers to roll out broad-based easing. We have seen a hint of that in December, a 50 basis point triple R cut and a marginal 10 basis points cut in one year LPR shows that there will be more room for broad-based easings. Therefore, we, uh, our focus for 2022 is that the PBOC will continue with this sort of broad-based monetary easing with another 100 basis points cut in triple R and perhaps another 30 basis point cut in one year LPRs. How much will that support the property sector? Uh, our focus does not include a five-year LPR cut, which uh, is essentially our view that the policymakers will stick to its medium-term priority of deleveraging in the property and the local government sectors. So uh, the policy priorities for these sectors, in our opinion, is not to lift the boat all over again, but rather to stabilize the bottom line which is not to causing any systemic financial risks to the broader economy. We saw a fair bit of yuan strength, particularly towards the end of the year. Does this invite some sort of policy response, or do you see the yuan weakening naturally into 2022? I think for the yuan outlook, uh, we think that in the medium term, it's going to be uh, largely stable. Uh, and it will depend on China's uh, policy uh, policy rollout throughout the year. Two main factors might be affecting the yuan's outlook path. Uh, the first one being China's uh, COVID zero strategy and uh, the, 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 the policies revolving around that, which might be affecting capital flows. And another factor will be China's uh, pace and scale of uh, domestic easing policies. For now, we think that with uh, China still sticking to COVID zero strategy, there's still some room for exports to outperform. Balance of payment will likely to remain wide and supportive of the yuan in the near term. And I China reopens hopefully in the second half of the year, we, we will probably see some normalization of capital flows, which might lead to melt, 
uh, weakening pressure for the yuan. So mm. we pencil in our year end forecast at 645, which is just mildly weaker from where, where we are right now. We talked about easing of monetary and fiscal policy. What about easing on regulations, the regulatory pressure we've seen on tech and other parts of the Chinese economy? I think for regulations, the key point we are expecting for 2022 is more clarification and clearer communication in terms of regulations. We don't see major, major uh, unwind or reverse of what happened in 2021 because that revolves around medium-term policies such as achieving common prosperity and uh, to have more regulatory uh, regulatory changes for the entire sectors. So in 2022, we think that with clearer communication and more predictability, the, the various sectors uh, under regulation, uh, under, under regulatory change is likely to see more stabilization in 2022. Mm.